Welcome. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to yet another Chief Speaks on Enlightenment and Transformation. I welcome you all to this experience, those of you who are listening right now live and those of you who are coming in later through the uh, archive shows, whether they be through YouTube or through iTunes or your thumbing through them through the Enlightenment and Transformation dot com website. This experience is a product of the Anu Nation. And in particular, this is a part of the ministerial component that we call Enlightenment and Transformation. But the ministry is the Anu Life Global Ministries because this is a word. And these are concepts and these are calculations that have now been able to move beyond the sphere of uh, the international and uh, have become a cosmic vibration that's being sent out and people are able to hear it uh, even beyond the boundaries and designations of nation. So we are always thankful for the movement and the fulfillment of prophecy because all things that are happening right now and the work that's being told, uh, it for some, it was no surprise. These are things that were spoken about. These are things that were uh, revealed and disclosed through divination and through prophecy and through uh, a lot of work. So we're thankful for the fulfillment of those said ideas and prophecy. I am Chief Yuya, and what I want to speak about is on this month of February, we're going to be dealing with the concept of contradiction. And last month we just dealt with the, just the, the year, you know, starting our year off uh, in 2017 and, and what that meant and what that might look like for us. And even our conversations uh, surrounding contradiction, you know, really because we're still dealing with the beginning of the year in many senses. So, uh, we're still really speaking about uh, what's coming first or, you know, how to really begin the year off. Now, this is our last month before our vernal equinox in March. OK, so this is a this is kind of a turnover period. And February has always um, even by name for Boris uh, is a time of cleansing. OK, so this is a time when we get an opportunity to look at some of the things that we may be doing or some of the definitions that we're holding dear to ourselves. And we gives us ourselves an opportunity to reassess them, to reassess them, to reexamine them and to make some new intelligent decisions as to how we want to move in the world. So I decided for this month of February, um, 2017 that I would speak on contradictions and um, this is one of those months where I, where I will uh, intentionally not go too heavy because this topic has the potential to be uh, very convicting at a level that many people are just not ready to be convicted at in terms of the work that they feel they are doing and the work that they're hoping that they're doing so uh, my intention is never to deal with a person in a way where they walk away unwhole, even if they may not feel as comfortable as they did uh, at the onset or feel as confident as they may have at the onset. That's sometimes is going to be the result of coming against or coming in front of truth. You know, it may rattle and shake you a bit, but if you are firmly founded on peace, then it it will not really topple you. If you're not founded on peace, it will knock you over. And that's a good thing. So that way you can reposition yourself on your right footing and your right standing. So getting to it, um, contradiction, all right? Uh, huge topic, of course, in the spiritual community, huge, cop huge, huge topic in the self-development community because contradictions abound and often many of us we enter into these communities because we are seeking to escape the contradictions of social engineering and religious dogma that has plagued our lives so we now break free of that or at least we think we do and we invest ourselves into a uh, god form or deity hood that we feel that we've selected on our own very very similar to uh, relinquishing a name that you feel does not apply to you and taking on a new one, you know, so 
sadly, a lot of times when we make movements like that, sometimes we don't realize the true necessary steps that are involved and that are necessary uh, to be free. And we end up uh, continuing the same vicious cycles that we could have sworn that we've escaped from. So what I'm doing in this month is not necessarily trying to purposely uh, convict people in their hearts of uh, wasting time or doing things that were vain or fruitless, because I would never say that there's really no wasted steps. You know, even if you're doing the wrong thing, there are no wasted steps. So what I'm looking to do in this season is to show possibly maybe some of the things and that we may be thinking or we may be doing that uh, are not working towards our highest good. So that way we can begin to relinquish them and move to something that uh, allows us to appear and conduct and govern ourselves in a more intelligent manner. So that way we can have a more intelligent discourse with the universe. So one of the things that I wanted to speak on was our origins and our beginnings and origins and beginnings are very important because uh, often I share that uh, even when you're dealing with consciousness or you're trying to make a judgment or an assessment of one who presents themselves as a conscious leader or a conscious source of information, it's very important to understand why they got into what they are doing. I can't tell you how many times I get uh, video pop-ups and recommendations on YouTube or Twitter or my Instagram account, and I'm looking at people who were once my students, well, who once were attempting to study under me. And I know for with, without any shadow of a doubt what they currently know you know, their current limitations, their current capabilities. And often I see them marketing themselves as something much greater and much larger than what they actually are. And um, because often we don't ask questions uh, as to why people are doing what they're doing or what is qualified them to do what they're doing, uh, people are able to move through the ranks of popularity very quickly. Uh, while still actually not really knowing anything or not really dealing with their own personal neuroses or uh, deep-seated anxieties. So, and I see this almost, I mean, almost daily. I see somebody who came to me for information and I may have given them a track because sometimes we don't understand that. Uh, wisdom leaves us because of the violations that knowledge wages. Knowledge makes a mess sometimes, and then wisdom runs and hides. So we seek wisdom, and but we don't realize a little bit of knowledge that we have been given. Uh, we've created a karmic cycle, and we've created poor causes that need to be dealt with first for wisdom to come out of hiding because wisdom is almost scared to present itself to us because of the damage that we will cause. Uh, if you look at, again, Western society, you see prime examples of this. You see prime examples of individuals who have learned to use um, drugs and learn to use technology of all sorts, learn to use even psychology, learn to use education, learn to use religion in order to create uh some of the some of the largest and most widespread uh, destructive and harmful events on the planet. So they're using the knowledge of these things, uh, but do not possess the wisdom of them. In fact, they really don't even want the wisdom of them at first. Once they they learn that they can do something, they go and they start making a mess. So this is akin to people who just say, well, just show me how to do the ritual. Just show me how to do this. Show me how to do that. They just want the knowledge of it, but not the wisdom. And they'll never get the wisdom because of the damage that they've caused with the knowledge. So uh, they have an experience, but because they're not completely tapped in, they're not completely touching the actual experience or the actual phenomena or, in fact, the actual spirit. Um, they lose so much of um, what it could really be and what it's really saying to you. So. That's one contradiction. The seeking of, of knowledge sends 
uh, wisdom has become the norm in many senses. And like I said, I've seen so many of my own former, um, can't even use the word students. I'll have to say patrons. Some of my own former patrons doing the same thing. And uh, of course, it's a sad day, but uh, if one is unable to really see the degenerate character of another, then it speaks to that that person's character. Or if we're willing to ignore what's right in front of our faces and in front of our eyes, then it speaks to us. So I'm not even going to I may do that next show, create like a list of contradictions, but I don't want it to. I don't want to sensationalize it and make it like it's I don't want to make it clickbait. You know, the 10 largest contradictions in the conscious community, something like I don't want to do that. Uh, But everything I'm going to speak on, I'm going to be speaking to a contradiction, every single thing. So uh, another contradiction. And these are all things that need to, to cease, that we have to stop. If you don't have a mate, you're not a priest or a priestess. At least you're not an effective one. You're not a very good one. If you do not have a a family, at the very least, a family. I know that's hard for many to hear because they don't have mates. uh, But a lot of times uh, people are not in the place to understand that you don't have a mate, not because there's no good people to find. You don't have a mate because you're not a good person. You don't know how to be a mate. You know, you're not putting out the uh, you're not attracting the value to you that you desire because you don't possess the, the, the same value. You don't even possess complementary value in that sense. And sadly, we interweave ourselves between the human story and the spiritual story so much. We do it really when it's convenient. So when it's convenient, we'll utilize the human story that there's no good mates out here. That's why we're single. And uh, when that is no longer convenient, then we'll speak about the spiritual story that says that we can attract anything that we want to us. You can't have it both ways. That's that's contradictory. If your spirit is so strong and you're so divine and you're so beautiful and you're so in alignment. If you're so in alignment with your ancestral and spiritual glory, then you would have had a mate because these systems that you're ranting and raving about are family based. There's a man and a woman and a child or children or a man and women and children. That's our format. That's our power format. Anything after that is lesser. So even in my representation, uh, if it's ever unclear, I represent heterosexual melanoid men. And in fact, heterosexual melanoid alpha men. That is my model. Anything outside of that now becomes a beta to that. Uh, Significantly, uh, significantly, uh, men who create children so their 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 biological manhood is proven there's no questioning as if they're male or female they've created children and they're managing uh at least one woman if not multiple women that is the format here now again it doesn't mean that you have to do that but just understand that you can't sit at the same table uh there's different things require different level different levels of complexity and um Managing and maintaining a healthy, progressive and and, uh, spiritual and deep family is more complex than just maintaining yourself. So you would not get the same voice and you would not get the same rights as one who is. That's our way. And anyone who would speak against that is speaking of a different way, which doesn't really matter. Not to us. Okay, so contradictions abound. And a lot of times we get into the spiritual work or the personal development work because we have some serious contradictions in our lives that we're looking for ways to escape. You know, we have all of these different unconscious feelings of failing, you know, of failure or unconscious feelings of of anxiety. And we need something almost in every situation to give us a guider or to give us a way out. So oftentimes people will use divination in that sense. And they'll say, well, I did a reading on it. I did a reading on it. I did a reading on it because they begin to read on things that they're too afraid to address. They're too afraid to really look at. For instance, uh, if you are invested in this Western system, which seeks to to devalue, uh, humiliate, 
and disempower uh, individuals. If that is your investment, but at the same time you're you're holding up the flag of ATR or African traditional religions, then you're going to have some serious contradictions in your life. You can't get around it. You're going to have some serious contradictions because primarily um, most are not taught the sciences of how this country is ran and, and, and how the psychosis that this country perpetuates is cultivated and sustained. So without having that, regardless of how much you feel that you're in the system or learning the system, uh, you still are only a slave to it because you haven't learned the science of such. And that happens in everything. You, if you have the knowledge without the wisdom, you become a slave to that thing and it will run you ragged. You see, so a lot of times people will use uh, self-help or spirituality or indigenous sciences uh, or whatever, or consciousness or metaphysics as a, a method and, and means to uh, invest in these unrealistic expectations for themselves in order to avoid the real and the serious stone that's sitting in front of them and on their path. So they'll say things like, I am greatness. What made you great? Well, why can't you say that I am nothingness? Well, you could say that too, right? You could say that I'm a failure. Why can't you say that? I'm a, I am a failure. Nothing I do, I do correctly. Why is that, a, that statement any different than saying that I am victorious? Everything I put my hand to, I do with perfection. What is the difference in those statements? Both of them have yet to, to materialize themselves. Both of them are set upon a false premise of fantasy. But one may be more true because you may have displayed more failure than success. And the contradiction of many people who have entered into these communities is that they have displayed more failure and, un and more unsuccessful attempts and more ignorance than they have secession. So now they go to an extreme. But that's not realistic. And it just really, honestly, um, it won't work. <laughs> And it doesn't work, as we can see. If our spirituality and our way of approaching it was so dominant and so perfect, uh, we certainly would be in much different positions. We wouldn't have such a large ratio of things not working for us and calamities befalling us. It, there wouldn't be so much guesswork as to if we really are going to win, as to if we're really going to be safe tomorrow, as if, to, as if we're really going to make it to our place of self-actualization. It wouldn't be so much guesswork. We wouldn't need so many phrases and so many concepts and ideas to buffer our failure. You see, that's where you see the contradictions are alive and present. And I'll give you a simple way of often how they're they're created and then they're um, promoted even further. And this often happens on a very um, latent and subliminal level, even within us. It's subliminal. It's not always the external subliminal psyops and MK Ultra mind control programming that's getting at us. Sometimes it's just our our fantasies of escapism where we're not really dealing with what's in front of us, you know, or we allow contradictory statements to come out of our mouth, not realizing that it loses our connection and power with the energies that we need to work with. One of the things that um, we see an overabundance of and again, your conscious communities or your traditional spirituality is that there's this um, ambition to repeat uh, and as exact as possible, the movements and patterns uh, of people who have come before you. And the desire and the ambition is not necessarily to deviate from what people have done before you, but to do exactly what they have done before you. And the more that you can do what these ancient energies that you've never seen or met um, can do, and you're as, at least as far as you're taught, you're thinking that I'm following and I'm completing these movements with perfection and with preciseness. And the more that you can do that, the more you get a higher stamp of morality, the, the closer you become to um, this source or this God or whatever it is, the supreme entity that you're aspiring towards. But just moving in a rhetorical fashion, fashion and a cyclical fashion without deviation is an act of narcissism. 
because all things on the planet are spiraling and moving forward. So if you're constantly bringing them back to a place and repeating the movement in same and in like fashion, you're actually narcissistically, cystically and selfishly holding an energy black back into place just so that it can continually continue to feed your own anxiety and fear of moving forward. So you go backwards and you stay backwards because it's more comfortable there. And there are very few acts on the planet that we may do. You know, there are primal acts that we do that may emulate uh, what our ancestors may have done a billion years ago. And they may emulate it almost like sex is an act like that. You know, where sex may not have changed going forward or the changes that we see today, we may call perversions. But in fact, sex is even a force that looks to evolve and change. The sex of 2017 should not have been the the sex of, or should be the sex of 5017. Because as we're transforming into different beings and we're condensing further from a non-material existence, further into a, a material existence, every act that we do now goes to that same transformative process. Because as things become more physical, their potential for transformation increases, not necessarily their, their potential for creativity or their potential for expanded potentiality but their potential for transformation changes. The more you work, the more you touch things, the more you walk the work, the, 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 the earth, the more you struggle, the more the possibility for transformation. Think of it in your body. The more you use your body, the more your body will transform to accommodate that which you're doing. If, you, if you're doing something on a daily basis or at least consistently that require leg strength or upper body strength or core strength or even neck strength, then those areas of your body will develop. They will transform to meet whatever, whatever the demands are that you're putting on them. But if you put no demands and you're constantly moving in the same cyclical fashion, then there's, there's, a, there's a, almost a form of atrophy that takes place. And you're not even you're not exciting the body awareness. You're not exciting the body vehicle. You see, so uh, that within itself becomes a narcissistic act. So all things have to transform and change. And if they don't, then we're only holding them back as a as a desire to keep them within the realms of our own thinking. And sometimes we'll shun different theories, we'll shun different people, we'll shun different ideas in order to hold on to what it is that we consider to be comfortable for us. Here's a a, a very easy example. Uh, In many different traditions, we read about uh, the creation of man, man, woman, child, coming from um, maybe soil or clay or mud. You know, these are all common elements that we see in different indigenous cultures that uh, our actual bodies were formed out of, out of. But then when we read stories or we learn in our science textbooks about us possibly coming originally from fish life or even being the distant cousin of the primate, we laugh or we even get offended. Because how could we come from such a low life form to where we are today? Well, is not dirt and soil a low life form? So the concept of us coming from a lower life form and evolving to a higher life form exists even within our spiritual uh, creation stories. It exists straight and throughout. And some of those same stories, we read that we did come from fish. We did come from certain animal forms and then later uh, evolved into what we see today. And, And some traditions, we came from the serpent. Now, I'm not saying that we came from monkeys. I don't I don't necessarily agree with that theorem. At least I don't think that all people came from monkeys and pigs. Uh, However, uh, once we put the blockage in our mind, you realize you're also blocking the full acceptance of your creation story. Because of your own blocking neuroses. So what happens is when you're going into those cyclical circles of just repeating what it is that your ancestors did and you're just going in a circle because you're not moving into a spiral and moving up, you're actually not doing anything. 
your being without having. And that is one of the um, sad signifiers of the spiritual community. There's a desire to be so much without having so much. You can be abundance and you can be wealth and you can be love and you can be um, evolution and you can be a god and you can be a goddess. But you don't actually have the principles or the energies or the values of any of those things that you claim to be. You just keep saying I'm a be and eventually I will be. But we never really see the fulfillment of that eventuality ever. You'll see some you'll see people saying I be for 40 years and never actually be it. So then we see that they're 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 running around in the circle and they're basically hovering over the real work. That's all that's really happening. They're saying I'm a farmer, but they haven't touched the soil yet. They're in some type of uh, air propelled vehicle, a hovercraft where they they're not touching the soil, but they're going around the soil, imitating the same movements and activities of the farmers, even in same season but they refuse to drop down to actually touch what's going on, which would then compel them to transform it and move it to the next space. So that's what so many of our, of, of us have done in our um, sad and unintentional uh, activities of contradiction. We focused on the being and not the having. So if we don't have it, We can't take it to the next level and look at your sciences. No different than if you look at a relay race, someone has a baton. Now you have to take that baton in order to take it to the next level. But first, what you have to do is run with the person who has the baton. You have to do what they're doing first. Then you can take the baton. You can't hang from the air or a helicopter and say, pass me the baton. Personally, I can't give you this because you're not down here with me. You're not actually running the race. You're just flying above it. You don't want to burn. You don't want to feel like your your lungs are going to split. You don't want to vomit after the race because you ran so hard or feel your knee feel like it's going to blow out. You don't want that experience. So I'm not actually going to give you these sciences. You actually don't have them. This is why things are not working for you because you don't have what you thought you had or what you can proclaim to have because you never took the baton. So there are so many things that we need to look at in terms of um, what we say we're invested in and what we actually say that we're doing, because oftentimes, again, that inner selfishness, um, which really does typify a lot of times why we got into the work. The inner selfishness becomes the greatest obstacle and the greatest block from us actually really doing something. And Internet popularity doesn't mean that you actually have it. There are very popular people in this world who are soulless. So popularity uh, should never be your marker for thinking that you've arrived or having a bunch of uneducated people who don't even know themselves say that you arrived. That's not going to cut it. You see, they don't know themselves and often they just sit on the Internet watching because they also don't want to do. So you become the king or the queen queen of non-doers. And that title fades because it's not anchored anchored in all of the elements. There's no earth there. Earth is your greatest anchor of all the elements. In fact, it's the only element that you can actually anchor in is the earth. So if you haven't touched those transformative properties, Uh, That require you to actually have and do aside from just a a hollow assertion of being, then you still stay stuck. And this is revealed through so many uh, different things that people do, not only with, you know, just their their selfish questing for power um, or their their selfish questing from uh, to, to avoid. Again, like I said, their anxieties and their neuroses that they really need to be dealing with. Um, And this is one of the reasons why you look into the spiritual communities, conscious communities, you see the largest number of misfits. And when I say misfits, people who don't really have the ability to have families or to have friends. And they'll tell you it's because they're, you know, they're they're with they got another vibration and they're dealing with these sciences and people don't understand them. But that's not what it is. They're not nearly as deep as they think they are or they try to make you think they are. What it is, is that they have psychological and personality issues that, and they've, they found this method of escape because in many senses, especially now, knowledge can be attained without wisdom. 
you know, or I, knowledge is always obtained without wisdom, but there's never a demand that wisdom follow the knowledge that's given. So when something is taught, there's very little demand for application. Well, you learn it. Let's see what you do with it. So there's no communal and, and more collective command for application than individuals will put on the cloak of wisdom and understanding. Very similar to the story that I, the Pataki I shared about Orumula and his son. I believe that's on the Arumula show if you want to go back and listen to it. Where just through emulation, indiscriminate in emulation, his son said, well, listen, I have on your brass shoes. I'm wearing a crown just like you. I'm you. And Arumula would say, no, no, son. You're not me. No. And you're going to bow down like everybody else did. You're going to bow down on knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. Just because you have the knowledge of what it appears like or what it sounds like doesn't mean that you have the wisdom and understanding of such thing. Because in order to have that, you're going to have to break yourself by touching the earth, by touching the hard element that you seek to, to remove yourself from. One of the ways that you know oftentimes that a person is doing this is because they have a ravenous appetite for information. That's because they're not applying any of it. So they got to keep taking your knowledge, taking your knowledge, taking your knowledge to actually uh, delude themselves into thinking that they're actually doing something. So they'll say, well, if I take in the information, then that's like, you know, that's like I did it then. No, if you did it, that's like you did it. <laughs> you see, so there's always this pull for give me some more, give me some more, give me some more, give me some more. I see that so often when people take my classes, they try to rush through the class. And then they turn around and ask me very elementary questions that were already answered in the class. Clear as day, might have been answered five times, but they weren't actually taking the class. They were rushing through because they had a hollow quest for knowledge. And, they, and there's nothing admirable about that. Your quest should be for understanding so that that information and that awareness stands inside of you. Because once it stands inside of you, you begin to move. It begins to control you almost. You begin to be controlled by the righteousness of the wisdom that's living inside of you. That's called being filled with the Holy Spirit. Because the commandments and the laws and the ideas and the calculations and the gems are now infilling. And they're ordering how you move through the world. And the degree of calamity that one has versus yours doesn't mean that you're, you're in a higher spiritual place than that person is. Another contradiction we see often. Or even the uh, the intellect that we automatically allow and place on our ancestors indiscriminately. Too quick to say what Jupiter does and what Saturn does and what the moon does and what the sun does and you know what Mercury does and what Uranus does. Things that we've never even seen let alone been, been to. How do you know what's up there? Because my ancestors told you, the smart ones or the dumb ones. Just because it's old doesn't mean it's good. And everything doesn't and shouldn't be repeated in the exact manner. That's why when you're running a relay race, each person in that race has a different talent. Each runner is picked by that coach to go at a, in a certain order because of what they're able to do in that race. They're not expected to do the same exact thing that the last person just did. You can't win that way and you can't make it to where you got to go in that fashion, in that manner. You'll just keep running around in circles, but never actually getting the gold, which is the transformation, which is the alchemy. OK, so I'm keeping this show at the time. I'm going to work on that uh, from here on out to the rest of the year to maintain my actual time. I'm a little bit over 30 minutes, but closer. Uh, this Sunday, we have the men's call, 1 p.m. For those who are signed up for the ministry, for those of you who are not, get signed up. Um, we're gonna we're changing the process soon, too, so that you'll get your notifications sooner as far as where to call in and everything like that. Um, we're going to kind of automate that process. So, you know, just be in tune for that. And um, we also took a poll. Again, the polls are on the site, sadoodlehouse.com. So um, uh, anunation.org, Enlightenment and Transformation. Uh, for those of you who would like to attend the uh, retreat this year, you know, we gave it an option, New Orleans or the Charlotte area or other. Uh, right now, it looks like New Orleans is in the lead. But um, this is for people who are planning to attend, not just, you know, throwing out little, yeah, whatever, here, yeah, I'll just click a button. 
okay? Because we do utilize the data and there are resources and work uh, that are put behind uh, wherever we say we're gonna do it because the planning starts now. We're actually a little late on the planning, actually, because of me. You know, it's my fault. But um, so, you know, that is up there. And like I said, we have the men's call coming up uh, this Sunday. And you guys know also the Anu Spiritual Training Challenge. Phase one has began. I believe we're still on module one. And uh, we're making some changes on the Sedulu House site. I know some of you had some issues with actually seeing your classes uh, after you've started them. So um, we're actually overhauling the back end system and, and actually simplifying it. So that problem won't even happen anymore. All right. So that that will be taken care of uh, very soon. All right. But thank you for tuning in. All right. And uh, if you're not a member of the Sedulu House, you're not a student, sign up suduluhouse.com join the Anu spiritual training phase one challenge and be through uh phase one by june uh you will have to go back though <laughs> just like grasping with divine power shrine and altar solutions uh you know 14 keys they're not one-offs nothing that i create is a one-off even these shows you know they're not you can listen to it and say oh yeah i heard it, it was 30 minutes i got it all you're not going to get it all in 30 minutes Everything is multi-layered. That's said. That's written. Um, that's presented. It's all multi-layered. Okay, but um, going through the experience with the group of people as a cohort is very valuable. So, uh, again, I urge you all to sign up for that so you could be a part of that and get the tips and the pointers that the students are sending out uh, via newsletters and whatnot. All right. So, and um, for anything else you need, you're going to see some links in this video. And um, you can go from there. And if you want to be a part of the ministry and what we're doing and what we're building, anulifeglobal.org and just uh, fill out the form to join up. You can also do that through the Anu Nation Android app. And like I said, the uh, iOS app is coming soon for those of you who are on Mac. But the uh, Android app, just download it and you, there's a form in there uh, where you can sign up as well. All right. Until such time, this has been Chief Yuya with Chief Speaks. <laughs>